And I want to talk about one of the world's most unfree countries. Yesterday, the Chinese Communist Party implemented its draconian national security law on Hong Kong in violation of commitments that it made to the Hong Kong people and to the United Kingdom in a UN registered treaty and in contravention of Hong Kongers' human rights and fundamental freedoms. Free Hong Kong was one of the world's most stable, prosperous, and dynamic cities. Now, now it will be just another communist run city where its people will be subject to the party elite's whims. It's sad. Indeed, this is already happening. Security forces are already rounding up Hong Kongers for daring to speak and think freely. The rule of law has been eviscerated. And as always, the Chinese Communist Party fears its own people more than anything else. The United States is deeply concerned about the law's sweeping provisions and the safety of everyone living in the territory, including Americans. Article 38 of the new law also purports to apply to offenses committed outside of Hong Kong by non-residents of Hong Kong, and this likely includes Americans. This is outrageous and an affront to all nations. On Friday, we implemented visa restrictions on those responsible for the Hong Kong crackdown. On Monday, uh, we announced that we would end defense equipment and dual-use technology exports of U.S. origin going to the territory. We will continue to implement President Trump's directive to end Hong Kong's special status. Other federal agencies are involved as well. I applaud FCC Chairman Ajit Pai's for designating Huawei and ZTE as national security risks. We're also continuing to take action to build on President Trump's signing of the Uyghur Human Rights Policy Act. Today, the United States Department of State, along with Treasury, Commerce, and DHS, are issuing a business advisory to companies with supply chain links to entities complicit in forced labor and other human rights abuses in Xinjiang and throughout China. CEOs should read this notice closely and be aware of the reputational, economic, and legal risks of supporting such assaults on human dignity. I want to call attention to recent credible and deeply disturbing new reports that the Chinese Communist Party is imposing forced sterilization and abortions on Uyghurs and other minorities in Western China. This shocking news is, sadly, consistent with the CCP's decades-long callous disregard for the sanctity of human life. I call on all nations, women's advocates, religious groups, and human rights organizations to stand up for the Chinese people's basic human dignity. Talk about, when I was in Honolulu, they talk about wanting to be good stewards, international players that comply with multilateral obligations, but when you're violating citizens' most fundamental freedoms, uh, we should look to your actions, not to your words. And so that's what we will continue to do. We'll continue to do all the things that we can. And importantly, we will continue to build out a global coalition that understands the challenge that the Chinese Communist Party threat places on freedom-loving peoples all across the world. This isn't a U.S.-China challenge. This is a challenge that is between freedom and authoritarianism. And so long as we keep that foremost in our minds, I'm confident that the uh, freedom-loving peoples of the world will prevail. 大纪元时报遍布全球，不受财团、政党影响，真实感言。不管是想了解国际局势、两岸议题，或者想要寓教于乐、丰富人生，您需要的都在大纪元时报。顶报专线零八零零五六六六八八。